Lightness and fluidity. That's the first sensation I remember from my time in Stream City. I also remember that great sound. It was coming from Aeolian arcs that surround the magnetic ring. When I entered into the city for the first time, I felt like I was going to run an invisible wall. I realized later it was very important for keeping people safe inside the magnetic field. Indeed, nothing was attached to the ground in the stream city. On my first day, I was able to surf from the wind and the magnetic fluxes. The attachment was the feeling I was searching for. Uh, before my three years in the sky, I used to feel the need to step back from this relentless consumer world. I thought of the flying city as, uh, as an escape, a place to live differently. People, they used to settle temporarily on the minimalistic structures because uh, flying all day long was quite exhausting and uh, we were reliant on our bodies and the stream jets as the only means of transportation. In the beginning, I was very skeptical about resting on the structures because they were like common appliances for all streamers in the city. Uh, I couldn't claim why as my own as the day after it would just disappear. But with some time, I accepted to let go to give the structure to someone else and with some practice I was even able to find a comfortable position on it. When you look at the sky, you see that it is wide and open. And so was Stream City. It was a temporary anarchistic municipality. We didn't need to rent a spot we used from any company or institution because they were temporarily ours. But sometimes it was very difficult for me to remain in that full public space. I mean, it's difficult to live in a city without houses and closed buildings, especially when you are not accustomed to do so. But I have learned ways to get my privacy back. I just found it in the clouds. The idea of living in a space where all resources were free and accessible fascinated me. I thought it would ease everything. But in practice, it was totally different. For fishing, for example, we used magnetic baits, but there were only a limited number of them. So we had to organize collective fishing and common meals to ensure everybody had to eat. Personally, I liked to go fishing, and other streamers were more interested in the harvesting berries. We had no specific roles, but we enjoyed collaborating with each other. I really miss the flying, but you know, everything has an end in life. The batteries that power the electromagnets of the stream jets need to be charged. I could get energy from the solar stations, but as their stock were not infinite, we streamers used to cooperate to manage these local resources. The daily indirect organization was quite important since we were constantly moving. No one had fixed bounds to things, to places, or to other inhabitants. That temporary mode of common governance was really different from what is ordinarily established on Earth. Everything was meant to be transient and ephemeral in Stream City. And for that reason, I got lost so many times. Flying infrastructures were changing location every day. But as it were common properly, I could settle wherever I needed to. And this is what I recall from my three years in Stream City. The air is an element you cannot forget.
Are you ready to invest some money in your own redundancy? With your investment you can push the automation of your labor one big step further. Isabella, my human predecessor, did this herself. When she was still working as a financial expert she invested in my development. Now I am generating her income she doesn't need to work anymore and can spend her time with things she enjoys. These days she is busy doing tax studies and helping people with their income tax, but also with gardening with her family, cooking with friends and preparing a trip to New Zealand and Australia. Could you imagine to also freely choose how to spend your time? The rapid automation of labor forces us to rethink the common purpose, value and social organization of labor it allows us to create a transition from labor to work, from an activity we mainly sell in order to satisfy our basic needs in terms of food and shelter towards an activity we deliberately choose for benefits such as social interaction, participation and self-development. What would you do if you didn't have to work for an income anymore? Humans have always relied on tools to enforce knowledge and shape surroundings. The project challenges the rigid understanding of reality and invokes our elastic instincts of seeing world without any frameworks. A rubber ruler that addresses social distancing and extends as tension rises. A 3D set square that offers reflective perspectives a drawing compass with a calligraphic brush at the end that emphasizes fluidity and a flexible bubble level suggesting that relative flatness might be curved. The distance between my friends and I was short. We were very close. When the pandemic reached me and I got infected, my friends were very sweet to me. However, when I recovered, there lingered an awkwardness in our interactions, 
even within the 1.5 meters of safe distance. Even now I distance myself slightly because I'm still concerned by the unknown side effects of the disease. This social distance is not a physical number, it is an anxious tension of sustaining physical safety and emotional security. It is easy to measure the physical distance, but difficult to rationalize the emotional tension between hearts. Whenever I face new information, it's like looking at a flat image from a framed perspective. I used to read the news every day, but gradually stopped because of the overwhelming negative energy. After living in a foreign country, I experienced a different point of view from my own. I realized the truth of what is deeply believed before is relative. Because it is easy to dismiss something when you think you are right. The challenge is to embrace the diverse perspectives and welcome communication and reflection. Beauty has no flat definition, but multidimensional interaction and discussions from different angles. School taught me to be successful and fulfilled like a perfect, smooth circle. I needed to be the winner in everything, whether it is studies, career, or life. It will bring me happiness and value. When I draw a circle, I find that it is impossible to choose a starting point. Any execution breaks the perfection of the idea. The movement is either fast or slow, heavy or light. The translation of the circle is never as smooth as the goal. And there is no competition, except with myself, on the moving track all the way until the end. But it is beautiful to draw, no matter what the result is. I asked my dad to teach me how to use the bubble level meter. I was so excited to play with a bubble inside such a serious tool. He said the bubble is correct when it's in the middle, which means precise flatness. Thinking about the flatness of the earth, it was hard for me to imagine another country can be beneath my feet. Now. I notice the curvature of the horizon on flights. I have a new perspective of understanding the relative flatness of the globe. But it's rare to welcome doubts that challenge the widely accepted standards of reality, let alone accept the possibility of a broader view.